I'm your host, Sam Coglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. So earlier this month, I was asked to go on the Women Offshore podcast and talk about an amazing person by the name of Robert Smalls. Well, it just so happens that the Secretary of the Navy just announced today that the U.S. cruiser, uh, USS Chancellorsville, which is named for a Confederate victory in the Civil War, is going to be renamed. This is part of an effort to rename vessels and government installations away from Confederate names over to other ones. And the name they chose is Robert Smalls. So I thought I'd link over to the Women Offshore podcast to get this great history about this amazing person, Robert Smalls. If you enjoy the podcast, check out Women Offshore. It is a great organization that supports women across the maritime industry. Enjoy today's podcast. Welcome, everyone. You are listening to the Women Offshore Podcast. This is Ali Cedeno and Christine McMillan. We are both experienced seafarers. And at Women Offshore, we are making waves. The Women Offshore Foundation propels women plus into meaningful careers through access to a worldwide community and professional development resources while raising awareness amongst industry leaders and decision makers about issues affecting women on the water. This podcast is an integral part of our mission, and we appreciate you listening in. New episodes of the Women Offshore podcasts are available every Tuesday. Subscribe on whatever platform you like to listen to podcasts on and be in the know about the latest topics related to diversity, equity, and inclusion within the maritime and offshore industries. Thanks for tuning in. We have another great episode for you today. This episode of the Women Offshore Podcast is sponsored by the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy Alumni Association Foundation. Their support for midshipmen in the industry is unparalleled. Thank you for all of your support. And listeners can find more information at usmmaalumni.com. So today on the Women Offshore podcast, I am honored to have the privilege to speak with Sal Mercagliano again. We had him on the show a long a couple months ago, and today we have a great conversation that we're going to have today. Welcome, Sal. Uh, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me. We wanted to share a story that doesn't get a lot of recognition, I don't think. It doesn't get enough. And so you are a historian, you are a professor. And so we wanted to have you tell the story because, and you're a great storyteller. And so we're going to tell the story of Robert Smalls and the planter. Can we start from the beginning and we're just going to work our way through the story? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Robert Smalls uh, was born in South Carolina, uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, 1839. Uh, he was born into slavery. He knew nothing but slavery his entire life. Uh, we don't know anything about his father. There's a uh, there's a suspicion that this uh, the owner of of him was his father, uh, but he uh, at a very young age, at about twelve years, he was, which is very typical of the period of time, was basically leased out to op to work in the port of Charleston, and he became very enamored with the sea and the ocean for for obviously good reasons. If you're a slave and you're stuck working on land all the time, the image of the ocean and the sea is freedom, which a lot of mariners associate with. Yes. And so he started at a very young age, 12 years old, working on the docks of Charleston. And he did a variety of different jobs. He really became a kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, he did everything from stevedoring and moving cargo to uh, sail repair to working on vessels. And he eventually got to the point where he was going out on local vessels, coastal vessels, and became what we would typically call a pilot today. They would refer to as a wheelman, someone okay. who really wasn't so much a pilot as a helmsman and, and provide that expertise, especially in coastal waters. You remember, this is the 1830s. Uh, in 1840s, there, there's not NOAA. We don't have the great charts we have. So really local knowledge was essential. And in and around the Sea Isles, around Charleston, there was a lot of movement of cargo. And so Robert Smalls became very well trained and educated in that. Uh, even though he couldn't read or write, he was proficient on working. Okay. So he has this amazing background of being on the water and then war breaks out. 
Well, even even before the war breaks out, you got a very interesting situation in Charleston because South Carolina is the hotbed for the secession movement and slavery in the United States. Okay. And you had an issue with sailors in Charleston to begin with because Charleston is a, a huge harbor port. Obviously, you have ships coming from the north, ships coming from England over to load cotton. And early, early on, back in 1822, South Carolina passed something called the Negro Seamen's Act. And because a lot of the crew members were African-American, there was a problem when ships would come in, the crews would walk around, and a lot of them were these African-Americans. And South Carolina didn't like to advertise the idea that slaves could have freedom. So they passed uh-huh. this act. This is after a big slave revolt, the Denmark Vesey revolt. And so they passed this act. So imagine this, you sail into the harbor and as ship's master, you're required to have any African-American crew member of yours report to the local jail and sit in jail while the ship is in port. And if you don't come and bail them back out before you leave, then if they're left by a ship, they get sold into slavery. No way. Yeah. That's wild. Matter of fact, it went to the courts. Uh, the uh, The South Carolina court sustained it. The district court overturned it. But South Carolina said, well, good luck trying to enforce it. We're going to enforce this. So South Carolina was really unique when it came to shipping. And, and obviously, it was, it was a huge shipping town. You got the Cooper and the Ashley River there. And South Carolina was just the hotbed here for issues. And when secession happened, when, when uh, you know, we, we tend to think that January 6th, two years ago was the big moment when people protested the electoral college. But the biggest moment was December of 1860 when South Carolina protested the electoral college election of Abraham Lincoln, and they voted to leave the union, which they did. They, they seceded. They, they, they basically de-ratified the constitution. They left the union and they were shortly thereafter joined by seven other states and then eventually four other states. And so you become the confederacy. And the Confederacy takes over Fort Sumter, the fort, which became really the center of the beginning of the Civil War, is taken over. And South Carolina begins to fortify the port. And they start taking any vessels they have that are in and around the port, arming them and using them for their own purposes. And one of the ships was a ship called the Planter. And by this point, Robert Smalls, along with several other African-American crew members, were on board the vessel as crew. Uh, the seven other ones were largely used to to stoke the boiler. But Robert Smalls was up on the bridge. He was the wheelman helping the captain navigate through. And the planner had a very essential mission. It would move cannon around the harbor, but it would also plan what we would today call mines. But it was also uh, what they call back then torpedoes. And okay. so it was really integral into the defense of the harbor. All right. So we're getting into the heat of the story now. And so... What does Robert do? He's on this vessel and he has a unique position being in the wheelhouse when a lot of people don't have that spot. Right. And and it's not just that he knows the lay of the land, but he works right alongside the ship's captain. And so he knows not just how to operate the ship, but the signals and the passes and how a ship like this would normally operate in the harbor. So he and the other crew members hatch a plan. It's May of 1862. It is May uh, 12th of 1862. And the crew members decide to go off for the evening. So the ship's officers and the other crew members are off, leaving Robert Smalls and the other African-Americans on board. And this is where their plan came into action. They had invited, Robert had asked permission to bring some of the families on board that evening to visit. And the captain gave permission as long as they were off by curfew. And at the curfew time, they took them off the vessel, but then snuck them back. And so that evening, they tell to the women and children their plan. We're going to take the planner and sail out to the Union blockading fleet off of Charleston. And this is extremely dangerous. Obviously, if if they get caught, they're going to be executed. Uh, If they get caught out in the middle of the harbor, they may be attacked. And initially, a lot of the women and children don't want to go. They, They think it's just too dangerous. It's too dangerous to take this. But Robert and the rest of the crew convince them they set sail on board. They actually have to make a stop further down uh, as they go to pick up other family members who are told to meet them at a different place. Oh, my gosh. They head out with this. Now, Robert Smalls is is absolutely a, 
superhero in many ways. He's just he's he he has no compulsion here. He <laughs> dresses as the ship's captain. He puts on the hat he normally wears and takes the position where the captain normally would be on the ship because this is small, it's a small harbor. It, everybody knows each other. And so the ship's captain is well known. And as they head through the channel, through the torpedo laden areas, they have to follow a set course, which brings them under the guns of these large fortifications, including Fort Sumter. And the crew members are like, don't do this. You know, go further out, get further away from the fort. And he's like, no, you got to go the way they normally would go. You can't deviate. And so as they get challenged, they answer the challenges. Usually it's with ship whistles. So they got to respond back with a set of whistles uh, or show a signal lamp or a light. And Robert Smalls is up on the bow. He's wearing this hat where the captain always wore. He's using the hand motions he always did because you can't really see him very well. But it's enough to get under the guns of the fort and they wow. pass Fort Sumter and they're out. But now they got to worry about the Union blockading fleet, knowing who they are. Right. And so as soon as they're clear of the fort, they have to take down the Confederate flag. They grab a bed sheet. They run a bed sheet up, but it's the middle of the night. So they're hoping that somebody sees this. They get all the family members up on deck. And as they sail out to meet the squadron, they get everybody waving on on the ship to try to convince them. A ship called the Onward is the ship that sees them. They are designed to stop blockade runners. It's May of 1862. There are blockade runners coming in and out who are hauling cotton out, bringing ammunition in. So the Union is shoot first, ask questions later type attitude. But for some reason, the Onward looks through here they see the ship they say no there's something weird about this 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 mm-hmm. is this isn't quite right they notice the white flag they notice the people on deck and so the ship sends over a boat they board it and robert smalls announced that he wants to surrender the vessel with several cannon on board that were they were moving cannon between forts it says i want to return this union cannon and our families want freedom and the union takes them in Wow. And so this is one of the few stories of a family being able to all stay together and escape. Yeah, he gets he gets not just his family, but the other crew members on board. They get their family members out. And then Robert Smalls, I mean, you would think, okay, that's enough. That's great. (laughs) No, I mean, he keeps going and, and it's an amazing life he has. So, you know, immediately he gets out. They want him to go up to like Washington, D.C. and up the north to go talk about this because he's seen as a hero in the north. But the commander of the blockading squadron, Admiral DuPont, says, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. I need you. You are you are familiar with the harbor. You know, these codes, you know, where the mines are planted. And he puts them as a pilot on board his ships. And matter of fact, he will be right there alongside the captains of ironclads as they go into the harbor and attack the Confederate uh, the Confederate fortifications. He's on a ship called the Keokuk, which is a terrible ironclad, and actually <laughs> shot to pieces and will eventually sink. But a lot of uh, attributions go to Robert Smalls for being able to navigate that vessel out of the harbor and getting the crew off before the ship goes down. Uh, it, he continually does this. He continually does this throughout the career. But then he does go to Washington. They bring him to Washington for a very important thing. They want to turn the freed slaves into soldiers, what they initially called contrabands. And it is Robert Smalls, along with some other people who sit there and say, listen, there are African-Americans along the coast who don't want to don't support the Confederacy. They want to be out of slavery. You can recruit them into these new units. And Mm -hmm. he gives a lot of expert testimony to members of the Congress, to the president, to Abraham Lincoln, to the secretary of war. And he begins this movement. We tend to focus this with glory and, 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 and that movie that was done with the Massachusetts. But in truth, there were South Carolina regiments that were created of these freed African Americans who become contraband soldiers and begin to fight. And so, I I mean, he's really instrumental in creating the African-American soldiers that will fight. One fourth of all the Union soldiers by the end of the Civil War are African-Americans. And Robert Smalls has no small part of that. Wow, that's truly amazing. Thank you for telling the story so nicely and painting this awesome picture of a true hero of of our time. And with a maritime background, it's just amazing that he was there and, and was such a big part of the success of the North. 
Yeah. And then, you know, we only scratched the surface. I'd recommend your uh, listeners to go find out about Robert Smalls. He helps get uh, desegregation in Pennsylvania. He goes on to a political career. He serves in the South Carolina legislature. He goes on to uh, um, um, uh, work in the U.S. Congress and wow. uh, later a major general in the South Carolina militia. There's actually a uh, army uh, landing craft uh, named for him that is still in service today. He's, he's an amazing person. Wow. So cool. I'm glad we got the chance to tell this story because I didn't know about it until you mentioned it to me. I'm excited to read his full biography and know more about him and to hear more of the voices that can shine through as we remember Black History Month. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share with the Women Offshore community today? No, again, you know, uh, stories like Robert Small is fantastic. I really recommend look into the history. The history of American maritime and uh, the maritime culture is is fantastic. And uh, if you'd like, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at Mercaglano S or over on YouTube at What's Going On With Shipping. Yes, I love uh, your YouTube channel. It's amazing to follow your stories there. And thank you for being uh, shining a light on the maritime industry and for today's generation. Happy to do it. 